in Florida's so-called Magic City is a venue that helped announce its arrival as one of the country's newest vacation hotspots. We are in South Florida at the mouth of Miami River and there's no more beautiful location. Miami Beach is famous. Everything is about water, the sea, and the sun down here. Right under the nose of Miami's residents lies a long forgotten structure. This is definitely a piece of statement architecture. It has a really strong, distinctive silhouette. There are a lot of seats and it just opens out into water. So you gotta think this is a place where sports are happening on the water. Ultimately, this place would prove to be more than a water sports venue. Events you would not expect took place here. The biggest surprise though, would arrive 20 years after a disaster shut it down. The assumption was that, oh my God, she's gone. She wasn't gone. Strong lady, strong lady. In the early 60s, the city of Miami wanted to show the world it was on the rise. They invested in large malls, a new football team, and here on this small downtown island, the Miami Marine Stadium. Miami Marine Stadium was the first purpose-built powerboat stadium ever built in the United States. Commissioned in 1962, the stadium played a key part in giving Miami its iconic image. Longtime Miami resident Bill Talbert spent many afternoons here watching the action unfold. I can remember sitting in those stands. The power boats were just so incredibly exciting. There's 6,566 seats here, and there's not a bad seat. The task to design this stadium was handed to a 28-year-old immigrant from Cuba called Hilario Candela. One of his first decisions was to pick a building material tough enough to withstand the salty sea air. This stadium is still considered a modernist icon because it's made entirely from poured concrete. And at the time, it was the largest structure of cantilevered concrete in the world. But construction of the stadium was not the only challenge. A track for the boats to race on was also needed. They created a U-shaped basin that allowed boats to turn 180 degrees at high speeds. Some boats could go as fast as 100 miles an hour. The dredging of this basin alone cost the same amount as building the entire stadium. After more than a year in the making, on December 27, 1963, the stadium officially opened. But opening day would end in tragedy. The Miami Marine Stadium was the nation's first purpose-built powerboat arena, and it put Miami on the map. When this was opened in 63, this was a sleepy little southern town. This was a bold statement to the world. On the water, on the Atlantic Ocean, in this emerging town called Miami, that, you know, we're a big time town. Spectators were fully immersed in the atmosphere, thanks to the stadium's design. With this closed in roof, the sound went up, around and down. It was loud, 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 and exciting. It got you out of your seats. But on the very first day, a tragic turn of events risked the future of the venue before it had even begun. Unfortunately, on the opening day, one of the racers, James Taft, lost his life in a crash. In a practice run, one of Taft's engines stalled, flipping the boat over and proving fatal for the driver. 
it was a painful reminder of how dangerous the sport can be. Despite the tragedy, the stadium continued to be a success. People were thrilled by high-speed boat races. Over the next decade, Miami boomed. Tourists flooded to the city, with the stadium playing its part. Miami was the center of boat racing in the United States and hosted many different types of but the stadium wasn't just about racing. Miami Marine Stadium hosted pageants, concerts, bands, religious events. If you have like a football stadium or a tennis stadium, the field is the stage there. But here there is no field. The field is the water. So stages were brought in. Bill was one of the many fans lucky enough to enjoy some of the memorable concerts held here. One of the unique things you can do is see a concert on your boat, getting here at noon and tying up boats four or five across. You know, I remember cooking lobsters and people were swimming in the water. Man, was that fun. In 1972, a different kind of event drew eyes from across the whole country to the stadium. Richard Nixon was on the campaign trail for re-election as president. President Richard Nixon held his youth rally at the stadium. The rally filled with Nixon supporters as they chanted four more years. The stadium was a symbol of Miami's growth as a city, but it became a victim of its own success. As powerboat engines became bigger and stronger, powerboat racing moved into the wide open sea. Mother Nature, though, would deal the final blow to the stadium. Hurricane Andrew was August 24, 1992. Remember, you would always talk about the big one. On that Saturday, it was coming straight in. I said, this is the big one. It's scary, and you don't know where it's going to hit. Miami avoided a direct hit but it was suspected that the stadium sustained some damage during the event, and it was declared unsafe for the public. Post-hurricane, the city had other priorities and the stadium fell into disrepair. But the original damage assessment didn't sit right with some. The assumption was for years that it's, it's structurally unsound. And somebody, maybe the original architect said, how does anybody know that? Incredibly, after 20 years of closure, the original assessment was proven wrong. The study was done, and it's fairly structurally sound. And that's what saved her. And in 2018, this was put on the National Register of Historic Places. It can never be torn down. And you can see, look at this. It looks like it'll last for 100 years. Our restoration effort is now underway, and there is hope these seats will one day be full again. The Miami Marine Stadium symbolizes a time when the city announced itself as an entertainment destination to be reckoned with. It's part of our history. It's unique. It distinguishes Miami from all the competition. Nobody has this 